In 1960, you could fill up the average family car with gas for about five bucks. You'd struggle to get around the block if you had to put in five bucks worth of gas today. That's down to inflation. It's not only the price of gas that has increased. Groceries are more expensive, school fees have gone up, and let's not talk about the price of houses. Inflation impacts every part of our lives, including your running. Today, I'm going to show you how inflation is ruining your running. And no, I'm not talking about the price of running shoes or the cost to enter a marathon. I'm talking about your actual running performance. You're probably thinking, Lindsay, that's a stretch. But today, I'm going to show you why inflation is wrecking your running how it's sneaking up on you and what you can do about it by making sure that you've got these five running inflation busters in place so that you can level up your running like nothing on earth. So let's first look at inflation and more importantly, how your running is linked to inflation. In its simplest form, inflation is like a block of ice. You can take it out of the freezer and if you leave it there, it's going to melt and get smaller and smaller over time until there's nothing left. Money works and your body works in exactly the same way. If you took a thousand bucks and put it under your mattress, in 30 years time, that thousand bucks would buy you considerably less than it would today. You're probably asking, how does that apply to my body? As a natural function of aging, as we get older, you are going to lose strength. And that goes in line with pretty much everything else in your body, that your body is slower to repair things, it doesn't repair things in the same way, and it really does start to operate on a principle of use it or lose it. So the less you do, the faster you'll lose strength. A totally sedentary lifestyle is equivalent to leaving a block of ice on the table or stashing your money under a mattress. Exercise is like taking your ice block and putting it in the refrigerator. It still melts, but over a much longer period of time. This is the same as putting your money in a low interest savings account. You get some interest, but you lose the inflation battle in the long run. So how do we stop this from happening in our running? Well, that's where the five running inflation busters come in. But to fully understand how they work, it is important to know what's going on in your body as you get older and why the running inflation is sneaking up on you. As part of the natural aging process, we lose strength. This process starts in our 30s and it really accelerates as we get into our 50s. It's largely driven by the fact that we actually physically start to lose muscle mass. And when we lose muscle mass, it then leads to us becoming weaker and we can't do the things that we used to do. That means something like running will start to cost us more because we have to use a greater proportion of the muscle that's left to achieve the same as we used to achieve. But because of that, more damage is done. And so we need more time to recover between exercise bouts. And if we don't give ourselves that time to recover, we really start to slow down. We're tired all the time and we end up not being able to run because we're injured. So that is where we'll end up if we don't put the five running inflation busters into practice. I actually talk about these in our Fast Beyond 50 Masterclass in a lot more detail and how you can practically make them work in your running. We're doing another one soon, so if you'd like to attend, you can click on the link in the description and book your spot. The first of the inflation busters is running less. As described in the aging process, the reality is that we are trying to do the same amount of work with less. And that means that in the act of trying to keep up with our younger selves, we are doing more damage. And when we do more damage, it takes longer to recover, coupled with the fact that as we are getting older, it takes us longer to recover anyway. And the only way around that, and the only way to give yourself more time to recover so that you can improve 
repair the damage that you've done and not continually dig yourself into a hole is to reduce the amount of running that you're doing. And that is to cut your running back from running every day or running most days of the week to running four days a week. The next one is slowing down. As we get older, there is a natural tendency for us to slow down. But if we want to slow down the slowing down, one of those keys is to make sure that we allow our relative intensity to come down. For most of your running career, you've probably been running too hard, particularly on your easy runs. And that is the number one mistake that most runners make. As we get older, it becomes more important that we make sure that we do our easy runs easy enough. And the reason for that is very simply this. The higher relative intensity that you exercise at, the more damage you are doing to the muscles because you're hitting the ground harder. So by slowing down, we can still train your aerobic processes or processes that use oxygen to provide energy. That aerobic zone, as they call it, is really broad. And on the lower or slower end of that zone, you are doing much less damage to your muscles. At the faster or harder end, you are doing more damage because you are hitting the ground harder, as I mentioned earlier. So if we can get the same amount of adaptation by doing less damage, that means that you will recover much quicker between bouts of activity and you'll be able to do your next run much sooner than you otherwise would have. Running inflation buster number three is walking. Walking is such a great tool because most of us really struggle to slow down enough to run easy enough to take advantage of running inflation buster number two. And so by adding in regular structured walk breaks into your training, you actually force yourself to slow down. You force yourself to change the impact of your running and give your muscles short breaks that mean that the damage that you are doing during each training session is less than it otherwise would have been, but even more importantly, it also helps you to make sure that you are training the physiology that we are in fact trying to train in that session. Number four should be a whole video on its own. In fact, it's like Warren Buffett's investment strategy. There's really nothing sexy about it. It's not the new shiny coin or the high flying fast crashing asset class. It's really super boring. It takes time and patience, but it pays huge dividends in the long run. I'm talking strength training. Strength training is the one area that we can truly reverse some of the effects of aging. So in the short term, if you haven't been doing strength training and you start doing the right strength training, you can actually put muscle back on get stronger and reclaim some of the losses that you have made through aging. Of course, as a long-term strategy, you are still going to be losing strength as a natural part of the aging process. However, if you are doing the strength training, you will greatly reduce the amount of strength training you'll do. And in relative terms, you are going to get much stronger than the people around you. And that is how you beat the inflation of aging. Because by doing that strength training, you are going to hold on to your strength for much longer than anybody around you. And you'll be getting relatively stronger than everybody in your peer group. The fifth running inflation buster is just like investing for long-term financial success. Just like investing small amounts of money month after month, year after year, and decade after decade will ensure your money beats inflation, consistency will ensure that you beat running inflation. Just like in investing in all aspects of life, consistency is really the biggest determinant of success. Consistency is about what we do day to day, week to week, month to month, and year to year. And the longer you can be consistent, especially as you get older, 
the more successful you're going to be. By training incorrectly, what happens is that you start to create gaps in your consistency. So if you're doing too much, training too hard, getting ill, breaking down with injury, these things keep giving you gaps in your training. And as we get older, when we are not moving, when we are not doing strength training, when we are not exercising, we have the use it or lose it rule. Your body starts to break down faster and you lose fitness much quicker. And so these principles are there to help you to make sure that you can be consistent and maintain your training so that you can improve in the short term and maintain in the long term so that you don't suffer from running inflation. These five running inflation busters are the key to ensuring that you run pain and injury free for many years to come. I've mentioned that the strength training is non-negotiable, but the truth is you can do more harm than good if you don't do the strength training properly. Watch this video next so that we can show you the five strength training exercises you should be doing, but also how to do them correctly so that you make sure that you do not get injured.